Walter Boyd here from Adventure Pilot. This is a video demonstration of the iFly 700. The iFly 700 is a GPS designed for general aviation pilots. It has a 7 inch display, a touch screen display. The entire user interface is managed through the touch screen. And there's a couple other unique things about this device. It displays sectional maps as your underlying moving map layer. And it's priced to be very affordable. Now I'm running this uh, demonstration on my PC. It's running on an emulator, not on the device itself. That's a whole lot easier to, to capture the screen from a PC than it is from the device. But functionally, what you're seeing uh, is going to be identical to what, what you would see on the iFly itself. So what we're looking at right now is uh, the screen that comes up after you turn on the device and wait for it to go through the boot sequence. Obviously, you're looking at a sectional map and you're centered on the current location. I'm that green airplane right there in the middle uh, at Collin County Regional Airport or McKinney Airport. There's buttons on the lower right for zooming in and zooming out. They would do what you think. They zoom in and zoom out. You can zoom pretty far in and you can zoom pretty far out. You can scroll this map by merely touching it and dragging it. You could scroll to another portion on the sectional, zoom in, get some more details. Anytime you want to get back to where you started, you can hit this follow plane button. That takes you back to your current location and it uh, puts the device back in tracking mode. So as you move, as you're flying, you will be tracked along the map. You'll have noticed we're showing one sectional at a time. Let me zoom out and show you that again. So we're showing the Dallas sectional right now, both sides, the north and the south. Immediately to my east is the Memphis south and north sectional. And to view that, you just touch it, and the Memphis sectional will be shown. You can switch back to the Dallas sectional merely by touching it. And to get back to where we started, follow plane and zoom back in. There's also a mode button over here that toggles you into a vector mode. This is a, this is a good mode for uh, the really bright situations where you need additional contrast. Uh, there's not near as much clutter as you would have on a sectional map, but at the same time not, not near as much information. Toggling between vector and sectional modes is very quick and easy. So if you're in vector mode and you see an airspace or a TFR or whatever it may be that you want to get some more information on, uh, you can toggle over back to uh, the sectional mode to get those additional details. Now you'll have noticed these buttons fading out, I think. Uh, I think you'll have noticed those. After about 30 seconds, if you're not touching the map, if you're not doing anything, these buttons fade out and that just helps to maximize your screen real estate. Now I have an active flight plan. This this uh, line right here is my route layer. I mean it's my uh, it's my route uh, for a, f a, f a f flight that I had planned earlier, a flight up to Lake Texoma. I'm going to just cancel that and we're going to start a whole new flight plan so you can kind of see how that works. I'm going to go into flight planning and say clear all. So now I don't have a flight plan. And you'll notice this uh, cleaned up the screen even more. I, I no longer have the set of instruments that are associated with uh, keeping yourself on course. I just have my speed, my course over the ground, and my altitude. Obviously this is all simulated data. So I'm going to initiate a new flight plan. And there are several ways to do that. For this demonstration, I'm just going to scroll over and I want to plan a flight to Decatur Municipal. This is Decatur Municipal Airport. I'm going to hold my finger on the screen for about two seconds and then I'm going to click Fly Direct to here. And I'm going to select the airport. And that drew a line directly from my current location to Decatur. Now, if I didn't want to fly through these uh, Class Bs with the low ceilings, it's very easy at this point to modify my route by simply touching the route line and dragging it to where I actually want to fly. So now I'm going to pretend like I'm taking off. I'm going to crank up my speed on my emulator. I'm going to put it back in follow plane mode. Now, my speed's jumping in increments, big increments there, but you'll notice what's happening as I accelerate. 
the plane is scrolling or, or panning to the edge of the map. This maximizes forward visibility. Uh, the, the center of the map is always going to be several hundred pixels uh, in front of the airplane. This, this just you're, you're typically a lot more interested in where you're going on a map than where you came from. At any point during the flight, you can, you're free to pan around just by tick touching and dragging your finger. And if you want to get additional information on the airports, you can just touch the airport to get some more information on it. So let's find out some more about Decatur here. So I held my finger down, and in this time, instead of flying, instead of selecting Fly Direct to here, I'm going to select Info on Decatur Muni. This pulls up a dialog that has all of the details uh, from our database about this airport. So that would include the attendance schedule if, if there's a tower, communications frequencies, and data on each of the runways. And also any additional remarks that the FAA has published on the airport. If there are charts associated with the airport, you can click View Charts. and It'll give you a list of what is available. So the, there are three instrument approaches published for this one. So we'll look at this uh, VOR DME to Runway 17. So now we're viewing the chart. Just like in the map, you can touch and drag to view all the elements of this chart. You can also zoom in and out if you want additional details. Or just a bigger overview. Sometimes these charts are oriented uh, at it horizontally, so there's rotate buttons to manage for that. And you can also get information on airports en route. I've overshot my t turn. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Get back on course. I don't really need this waypoint here, so I'm going to get rid of it by merely holding my finger down and saying remove this waypoint. You can also do interesting things with your route line while you're while you're actually flying. If you did want to divert to another airport, you can hold your finger down and say add waypoint here to this airport. And it'll divert your line accordingly. The iFly is automatically tracking your next waypoint. So it noticed when I went around that corner that I should be now targeting my final waypoint, so it's automatically managed that for me. One other thing I want to point out. After I looked at some charts and some airport infos, a history button appeared. And I can use this to quickly get back to any of the charts or airports that I was recently looking at. That concludes my uh, brief demonstration. There's a lot more functionality and capabilities in the iFly. Feel free to look us up at ifly.adventurepilot.com. You can also look up information about our company at www.adventurepilot.com. You can also get some great destinations and some, find some good excuses to go flying at that website. If you want to contact me directly, you can reach me by email, walter at adventurepilot.com. I look forward to answering any additional questions you have. Thanks for watching.